So the question is, is what is encryption in transit? So an important tool in cybersecurity is encryption. And basically all this is, is it's encrypting data so that people that are not supposed to be able to view it will not be able to view it. Now, when you're thinking about encryption though, you have to think about the different states of data. So data can either be at rest, it can be in process, or it can be in transit. So data at rest means it's just sitting on a hard drive, basically in storage. Data in process means that the CPU is doing something to the data, such as encoding a file, viewing a file, playing the file, something like that. Or you have data in transit, and that is when data is going from point A to point B. So when, you need to, when you're thinking about encryption, you need to think about the different states of data to determine what encryption tools that you're going to use. So when you have data at rest, you will encrypt the data in a specific way, so that if a hacker is able to break into your server room, they can't just simply steal one of the hard drives, go home home, plug it into their computer, and be able to view it. So when data is at rest, there's, there's one way of doing encryption. But then when you're going to be sending data from one computer or one server to another computer or another server, you have to think about how you're going to encrypt that data. So when data is in in transit. And so what we'll be talking about here is encryption in transit. So the idea is that you're encrypting the data as it moves from point A to point B. Now it's important to understand in this modern world, uh, post Snowden era that we're talking about data in transit, is that we're, you should not simply be thinking about when you're trying to send an email or connect to a web server halfway around the world. So normally when we think about data in transit or encryption in transit, we're thinking about about connecting to something like a website. So let's say you're trying to log into a website and so you would use HTTPS or SSL. So this would be for encryption in transit. So basically the password and user information that you're sending from your computer to that remote server on the other side of the world will be encrypted in transit. Then when that website then presents you with information, when it sends you back the web page, that will be in HTTPS using SSL and so the data Data will be encrypted as it comes back to you. So the idea being that if there is a man in the middle attack, if there's somebody in the middle trying to read the information, that they will not be able to view it. And so this is a standard uh, way we think about uh, encryption and transit. So we think about things like SSL uh, and HTTPS. So if you're going to be viewing a website, you think about things like SFTP, secure FTP. So if you're going to be uh, sending files in an FTP type process, but you want the, the file to be encrypted or the data to be encrypted as it's moved from point A to point B, you would use something like SFTP or you would use something like a VPN server. So if you're trying to connect to your LAN, uh, again, on the other side of the world or on the other side of the country, you would use a VPN in order to connect your computer to that LAN and the connection is secure. The data that you send will be encrypted as it moves to that network and the information from that network will be encrypted as it comes back to you. Now in the post Snowden era, one of the things that you do need to be thinking about though is encryption in transit within your own data centers. One of the things that has come out in this modern world is that apparently the NSA has literally put taps on fiber optic lines running from campus buildings in different Silicon Valley companies. So the thought was in the past that you needed to worry about encryption and transit. Again, if you're going a long distance, if you're going to a different state, or if you're going outside of your building or your infrastructure. Now what people have realized is hackers can get into a building. Uh, they can put uh, some kind of tap onto the network infrastructure in order to be able to read packets on the network. Uh, agencies such as the NSA is, are able to get in and actually tap on things like fiber optic lines to see the information going back and forth. And so one of the things that you should be thinking about in this modern world is thinking about encryption in transit in your own data center, in your own infrastructure. So when somebody is connecting to a server, so let's say a secretary or a warehouse worker is connecting to the server actually within your own building, one of the things that you should be thinking about is, is that data encrypted from the client computer? to the server. Not that long ago, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have even thought about it. You think that the, the network communications within your building are secure and therefore you don't need to encrypt those communications. Now what many people are realizing is that the data communications in server rooms, even on their own LAN, many times it's wise to encrypt 
that data in transit to make sure people aren't viewing it. So think, think about things. If people are sending their W-2 files, if people are logging in to portals, web portals, internal to the company, all of that information may be read. And if you're not thinking about encryption in transit, then that may be a real security hole. So all encryption in transit is, is it's basically encrypting data as it goes from point A to point B. Point A may be, may be your home, point B may be a website halfway around the world, or point A may be one server in a server room going to, a, to point B, another server in a server room. So all the encryption in transit means is that that data is encrypted from when it goes from point A to point B, and that's it. That's why encryption in transit is very important, and that's what it means.